Hello and welcome to today's lesson on electrical power. Our learning objectives are to explain the link between power, potential difference and current, and the energy changes over time, and apply the equations relating to potential difference, current, charge, resistance, power, energy and time. Microwave meals will often have different cooking times listed depending on the power of the microwave that's being used. A more powerful microwave will have a shorter cooking time because it can deliver the energy required in a shorter amount of time. Power is the energy transferred every second. What is the unit of power? What is the unit of power? Power is measured in watts, although sometimes it will be in kilowatts or megawatts. A kilowatt is a thousand watts and a megawatt is a million watts. To generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity... 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! In the classic 1980s movie, Back to the Future, the DeLorean time machine needs to generate 1.21 gigawatts in order to travel back in time. But what exactly is a gigawatt? Well, for a start, it's not a gigawatt, it's a gigawatt. One gigawatt is equal to a billion watts of power. That's one with nine zeros after it. Power depends on both current and potential difference. Current is the rate of flow of charge or charge over time. And potential difference tells you the energy transferred by each charge. So energy transferred over charge. By combining these two equations, we can find the power. Potential difference times current is equal to the energy transferred over charge potential difference, times the charge over time, current. And so the energy transferred times charge over charge times time. The charge in this case cancels out as it is on the top and the bottom, and we end up with energy transferred over time. So potential difference times current is equal to the energy transferred over time. We also know that power is energy transferred over time, so power must be equal to potential difference times current. This equation in red is an equation you must be able to remember and you must be able to apply it as well under exam conditions. And to help you remember the equation, we have this catchphrase. Just say what you see. And it is P on IV. This should help you remember the equation triangle that you need for power. P on IV. A 1.8 kilowatt hairdryer works on a potential difference of 230 volts. Calculate the current that will flow through it. Our first step with any math problem is to write down what we know. So the power is 1,800 watts and the potential difference is 230 volts. So using P on IV, the equation we need for current is power over potential difference or voltage. So the answer would be 7.8 to two significant figures. Now it's your turn to have a go. This toaster is connected to a mains with a potential difference of 240 volts and it has four amps flowing through it. What is the power? Please pause the video now and do the calculations in your book. You can press play when you're ready. It would be 240 volts times four amps, which gives a power of 960 watts. Always remember to work in base units when you're doing calculations. So work in watts rather than kilowatts and amps rather than milliamps. The greater the power something has, the more energy it can transfer each second. Energy is measured in joules. 
We often talk about energy in kilojoules, a thousand joules, or megajoules, a million joules, or even possibly a gigajoule, about the same amount of energy as a bolt of lightning. Energy can be found by timesing the power by the time. And to help us rearrange this equation, we can use this equation triangle, EPT. Now going back to the same toaster, we have another question for you. The toaster is 960 watts. It takes two minutes to make toast. How much energy does it use? Pause the video and put the answer in your book. Don't forget to change it into base units first. So two minutes would be 120 seconds. So 960 watts times 120 seconds would give you 115,200 joules. Don't forget to always work in seconds when you're dealing with time. A couple more questions now. A 230 volt kettle with a current of 12 amps flowing through it. What is the power? Pause the video and put the answer in your book. And for the second question, uh, it takes three minutes to boil. How much energy does it use? Don't forget to change it into seconds first. So the power would be 2760 watts and the energy used would be 496,800 joules. At this point we have two really important equations. The first is Ohm's law, potential difference is current times resistance. And the second is power is potential difference times current. We can substitute the first equation into the second equation to get power is current times resistance times current. Uh, which is the same as current times current times resistance or current squared times resistance. This is an equation you do need to remember and apply. As an example, we have an electric motor with a resistance of 120 ohms and a power of 480 watts. If we substitute these into the equation that we know and then we rearrange, we can find that current squared equals 480 divided by 120, which is 4. And if we square root both sides, the current then equals 2 amps. And now a question for you. Why is a 100 watt light bulb brighter than a 60 watt light bulb? Please pause the video now and write an answer in your book. A 100 watt light bulb transfers more energy per second by radiation than a 60 watt light bulb. How much energy does a two kilowatt heater transfer per second? Pause the video and write your answer in your book before you move on. Two kilowatts means it transfers 2000 joules every second. Calculate the power supplied to a motor with a resistance of 10 ohms when the potential difference across the motor is 12 volts. Pause the video while you answer the question in your book. Our first step is to find the current by dividing the voltage by the resistance, getting 1.2 amps. And then to find the power, we times the 1.2 amps by the 12 volts to get 14 watts of power. Calculate the power supplied to a motor with a resistance of 3 ohms when the potential difference across the motor is 12 volts. Pause the video again while you answer it in your book. As we did on the previous question, we find the current by dividing the voltage, 12 volts, by the resistance of 3 ohms to get 4 amps, and then times the 4 amps by the 12 volts to get 48 watts of power. Two kettles, one with a power of 1,200 watts and the other with a power of 1,800 watts. Compare the current flowing through each kettle.
the kettle with the greater power will have a greater current flowing through it for the same potential difference. We have the same two kettles again, but this time I'd like you to compare the resistance of each kettle. Pause the video again and put the answer in your books. As the kettle with the greater power has to have a higher current, it must have a lower resistance for the same potential difference. That brings us to the end of this lesson. I hope you found it useful and thank you very much.